Hello, everyone. This is Alfredo Abate, your current Chicago Oracle Users Group President. Welcome to today's webinar. As an attendee, you'll be in listen-only mode. You can ask questions in the chat window, which we will monitor. All questions will be answered at the end of the presentation. We'll also be streaming live on our YouTube channel, and the recording will be available there to view shortly after the presentation is finished. It's really great to be here with you virtually as the group hasn't met in person since I think August of last year when we had our last uh, uh, meeting on uh, Oracle Data Guard, or I'm sorry, Oracle Golden Gate. But for those who are new to the Chicago Oracle Users Group, we welcome you. Traditionally, our group meets between four to six times a year in various locations around the Chicagoland suburbs for presentations, as well as uh, hands-on workshops by Oracle experts, ACEs, and authors. With the restriction in place due to COVID, we decided to go virtual to continue to deliver awesome technical content to our members. Today is our fifth webinar in a series of 20 that we'll be holding until November 18th. You can look at our entire schedule on our website. We've added all the August registration links and we'll continue to add more registration links for the remaining sessions. So you'll be able to register for those as well. And again, our website is cog.us. Our user group runs completely unfunded. Our members don't pay any dues and our meetings have always been free. So I'd like to take a moment to thank our sponsor, OAPS Partners, OAPS Net Partners, which has provided us with the Zoom webinar platform. They are an Oracle Gold Partner and Systems Integrator with specialties in areas of financial business solutions based on Oracle applications, both on-premises and in the cloud. And they also provide services in the areas of AP automation, Apex development, database upgrades, and administration. Next week, don't miss our webinar with Oracle Product Manager, Joe Kalman, on Oracle Apex new features and roadmap. You can register for that on our website right now. This will be part of the training week next week. That's right, folks. The annual Midwest Oracle's Users Group and COUG Training Day is also going virtual with a virtual week. We'll have one presentation a day the entire week of August 10th. Talk about a lot of good content. Make sure you go look at that schedule and register for the sessions that look inter interesting to you. All of those are available at the viscositynacom event website. Today, we have the pleasure of having Chicago's three favorite and best Oracle guys, Nitin, Rich, and Jim. Gentlemen, welcome. I'm gonna give you control of the screen. Hey, great to be there with everybody. Jim? Well, hello everyone. It's uh, great to be here uh, on our Chicago Oracle Users Group fifth in five uh, out of the last five uh, sessions. And our session today is a little bit off the beaten path. Uh, we call it Converge Database, the path to a long and healthy Oracle DBA career <clears throat> and eventual retirement. Uh, seeing that I'm a little older than uh, some folks that I know in the world. I, we came up with this title sort of as a joke, but you know, in reality, that's really where a lot of our careers are headed. And, or at least towards retirement eventually, I should say. Uh, and uh, we put together an all-star Chicago team. Uh, I just would like to note that uh, this is as uh, a Chicagoan as it gets, my friend, three Chicago guys. Uh, and notice, of course, I was assigned the role of hot dog, right? Uh, but if you come from Chicago, you know anything about Chicago, uh, we don't get any more uh, formal than this. You got your Italian beef, which could be dry or wet, right? If you need an explanation on that, put it in the chat. I'll explain it later. You got your deep dish pizza and you got your Chicago style hot dog. And uh, just remember, uh, you know, if you've been in New York or whatever, they really hate Chicago style hot dogs uh, because uh, they tell us things like, you know, hey, if I wanted a salad on my hot dog, I'd ask for it. And uh, it's really interesting, too, uh, talking with Neaton and Rich and myself over the last several months uh, as we put this together. 
Uh, we found out that uh, yeah, we're mostly from the Chicago area. Uh, Rich and I, actually, our families are more from the south and southwest sides of the city. Uh, so, uh, you know, just to kind of give you a comparison of that, uh, Rich and I probably, without knowing it, would have met somewhere at Kaminsky Park. Uh, and during our seventh inning stretch, right, uh, we would be discussing which of the Chicago White Sox players would probably be throwing our paper cups filled with Stroh's beer at when they played poorly. Now, Neaton, on the other hand, he's a North Sider, so he's a Cubs fan. And so that means that his discussions, you know, when, when he would go to a Cubs game would probably be more around which appellation of Chardonnay would be appropriate with Coq Avant a little bit later, you know. And, you know, just so you know, the Cubs fans uh, don't have seventh inning stretches. They have seventh inning Tai Chi. And, of course, I'm joking about all this, right? Uh, it, just the point at, at that, you know, Chicagoans are a diverse bunch, right? Much like the organization that we're going to be talking about here today. And we basically each have taken on three different roles. Nathan's going to play the role of CEO, chief executive officer. And his big concern, uh, you know, and it's not hard to quantify this, especially in the world of today of COVID, right? Uh, how do I get, how do I get my, uh, there we go. Sorry, we jumped a little bit. How do we get, there we go, back to where we were. How do we get my organization to being data-driven? And meanwhile, Rich, playing the CIO role, really is thinking about, well, great. Uh, I understand what Nate wants, but how do I get my team to leverage the tools that are in place? And me, being an Oracle BBA, I'm thinking about how do I get my college education paid for my two kids, right? Is my job still going to be there? And Here's the cool thing about this. We're going to be talking about a concept called Converge Database. I'm just about ready to pass this off to our CEO. You're going to have a chance as a participant here today to uniquely influence what we're talking about. And at this point, I'm going to turn this over to my colleague, Neaton, and he's going to take over and talk about Converge Database from the CEO's perspective. Neaton? Thank you, uh, Jim. I didn't realize Northsiders were so sophisticated. You know, I'm gonna have to start wearing a tie more often and, and uh, you know, do Tai Chi and drink Chardonnay uh, as opposed to my Schlitz malt liquor beer that I generally drink. So appreciate that, Jim. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're real sophisticated. Go yeah, ahead. So uh, thanks for joining guys. Let's see how well this experiment works out. It, we have uh, three presenters, uh, three awesome presenters from Chicago, as Jim mentioned, and we're gonna try to pass this baton off between us three. Uh, so let's see, uh, hopefully this works out, right? Uh, oh, somebody's jumping ahead. Hold on a second. All right. Let me go back one slide. Well, anyway, let's just see. Let's hopefully this works out right. So uh, as, as Jim mentioned, I'm going to play the role of CEO. But uh, uh, as a safe harbor statement, I may uh, allude and kind of give hints on some uh, upcoming features. So if I do that, do not make purchasing decisions based on something I just said. So safe harbor. You guys have already seen this before. Um, all right. Agenda. So what are the things I'm going to cover? I'm going to kick off the conversation talking about data management and analytics. It's a progression towards automation. I kind of show you a, not necessarily a historical view, but a timeline view of how we're headed towards an automated view of analytics. Then we'll jump into and talk about why data is at the heart of analytics and specifically machine learning. Now, we're going to jump in and talk a little bit about some of the challenges we see in data management uh, as it relates to machine learning pipelines data diversity, and a common unified data tier platform for analytics. So in the beginning, you know, so don't think of this as a timeline, like I said, think of this as a progression from point A to point B. So a, 
our first uh, interlude into uh, analytics was really data warehousing, right? So data warehousing is uh, really organizing data and informational summaries, showing growth of business units, sales reports, you know, all based on KPI metrics, right? And after that, we started seeing this emergence of data mining, which brought along business intelligence, uh, pixel perfect digital uh, visualization dashboarding. And this was born on the backbone of on-premise enterprise data warehouse. And it still exists for the most part, right? And then with the advent of first generation clouds, we started seeing some interesting changes. We started seeing descriptive analytics and this dealt with what happened in the past. And then along with some really robust uh, storage technologies in the cloud like data lake, Hadoop, big data analytics, we started seeing this emergence of predictive analytics. And this talked about what could happen in the future. And then when we went with the introduction of Gen 2 cloud platforms, with really, when I'll talk a little bit more about Gen 2 cloud platforms are, we started seeing this emergence of integration of artificial intelligence, machine learning, adaptive enterprise. And we went from being a data-driven enterprise to being an adaptive enterprise. And prescriptive and augmented analytics came on the scene. And prescriptive analytics really talks about not only about what happened, what could happen in the future, but is there anything I can do about it? If it's something bad, I maybe I want to prevent it. If there's something good, maybe I want to augment it and make it better, right? So as you go from left to right, you're going to see things that are very manual, very canned uh, approaches to on the far right, which are extremely uh, automated and very li uh, linear and exponential in insight, insight management. So that's the progression here. Right? So that doesn't mean data warehouse is going away by any means, but you're going to start seeing this, this change and evolution in analytics as it goes to prescriptive and augmented analytics. And we're going to talk a lot more about what that really means. So we all talk about what data is. You know, everybody's got their adjective of the day. Data is a new oil. Data is a new, uh, new uh, gold. Data is a new, uh, new king or data is an asset, right? Uh, so what we're talking about here, what data we're talking about is unstructured, semi-structured, structured data. And it could be high velocity data, such as from uh, data coming from websites, IoT sensor data, social media data, or even trickling data that comes from your traditional ERP uh, transactional systems. But Gartner says that information has replaced technology as the central, most critical asset to be managed by organizations. Me being a data center guy, I grew up in the data center. I look at it slightly in more of a different angle. We always talk about computer hardware and peripherals, specifically servers and stuff, were the main assets. You know, that's the stuff we kept on the books. That's the stuff we depreciated, right? And the data that, that, that rested and resided on these servers was throwaway for the most part. We're talking about 15, 20, maybe 30 years ago. And I remember even truncating tables because we were being billed by EMC storage on the back end and we're cons consuming high commodity space. So we even truncated or even moved data off to worm drives to, in order to accommodate that. But what's happened over the last several years is that with the advent of really superior cloud technologies, specifically uh, Oracle, um, or specifically uh, storage technologies such as S3, object storage, Azure Blob, uh, that coupled with really superior computing technology, such as really fast processors in the cloud, GPUs, IPUs. Now couple that with really deep analytics, as we've mentioned before, prescriptive augmented analytics. Now what's happened is that the data that resides on these, on these systems, now that's the real asset, right? Now data becomes the king because of this and the underlying infrastructure and the hardware underneath that is high churn, low commodity <clears throat> stuff that you can turn in and out, right? And so data is becoming the new asset because of these things. But as a result, business leaders are really starting to make that shift to value on our information based on planning and funding models, right? What that means is that we don't wanna just collect data, right? We don't wanna just collect COBS data, but until you get value out of that data via analytics, it's just raw it idle data. But this requires a, fun, a fundamental shift in the thinking about data and data quality. So this brings us to pain point number one. So senior executives have to create organically a data and analytics driven culture, right? So this is, a, this is not a simple change. This is a transformative change, which requires a transformative approach, right? So what this is gonna entail is a strategic change a process shift, data shift, as well as a platform and org shift, right? Now let's talk a little bit more about what that means. 
So we all know that organizations are starting to take a data management strategy very seriously, as you can see by the slide. But what's keeping CDOs, chief data officers, CIOs, and CTOs awake is implementing data, uh, implementing formal data management strategies requires that organizations understand missed opportunities when relying on data that's either incomplete or false observation. So if you have analytics that's creating incorrect results or improper results, that is not a good thing, right? This is what keeps CDOs uh, up at night. And this really has to deal with data management strategy and primarily data quality. And one of the things you'll start seeing is that you'll find out that machine learning is, uh, is really requires right data for crucial uh, data model quality. Uh, come on, slide change. So we're talking about data quality. What are we talking about? We're talking about insufficient data. We're talking about duplicate data, outlier data, missing data, non-representative non data, data, and even too much data, right? When we talk about too much data, we're not talking about uh, machine learning can't handle millions of roles versus billions of roles. We're talking about uh, objects or attributes or entities that have wide number of columns or attributes and, or features. If you have a lot of uh, uh, features or variables that don't contribute to the end result, that's a lot of processing that's, that's undue and that takes a lot of overhead to do that. So you really have to crunch down and figure out what data is really relevant and what data is not going to pertain to the end result. So you can't really train a model if you can't trust the data. That's really the end. That's the main point here. And machine learning, like I said, having the right data is crucial for model quality. So how do we solve this pain point? Well, one is to have a strategic data initiative. We talked about this earlier. And it's not just one of those things you just turn overnight. It requires an organic change across lines of business. But at the heart of all this is really data governance, right? Data governance deals with usability, integrity, traceability, and the security of data, right? So the focus needs to really get back to the objective, which is to gain business insight from data, not just to collect large volumes of data, as I mentioned earlier. The best way to do this is have a modernized data management strategy. And all these little boxes underneath data governance, they can theoretically fall under the auspices of data governance. But I specifically called them out to illustrate a point on the next couple of slides. So a data architecture, and this is near and dear to my heart because I used to be a storage admin and obviously I work for a database company. So data architecture is really important. And the second one is really data, a data catalog. And this is also near and dear to me because this was my first job out of college. I was a data analyst or whatever they called it back then. But my role were there was to build a, a business glossary and that included uh, updating the taxonomy and ontology, def identifying data that came in and mapping it back to that ontology and taxonomy. So these are uh, key categories, uh, including data integration and data quality. Now, keep in mind, 80% of data scientists or, or quality engineers are dealing with this problem, right? So 80% of the workload really is, uh, is, is the crux of the problem here. So how do we reduce that footprint of that effort? So data scientists still have to deal with things like standardization, binning of data, uh, missing value treatment, outlier treatment. Right? This contributes to the overall data pipeline because it's 80% of the work. Now, along came uh, augmented analytics and auto ML. So what is auto ML, right? AutoML and Augmented Analytics is the next generation of BI and analytics, as I mentioned in an earlier slide. But how does it pertain to what we're talking about? Well, first of all, let me talk about what AutoML is. AutoML emerged a couple of years back, and even Oracle is starting to employ that and incorporate that in its machine learning platform. So AutoML really works, deals with coming up with a or developing an automatic selection for certain algorithms. So well, data scientists will take a model, create different algorithms, or work with different algorithms to see which is the best one for their model. That takes a lot of time, over and above the 80% of the work that they have to do to clean the data, right? So what AutoML does is helps in that process. So AutoML employs machine learning techniques for the automation of machine learning. Now, what's, what's, imp what's interesting that's happened over the last couple of years recently is that AutoML has embedded itself 
into all those little uh, tasks that we talked about before. If you remember uh, data catalog, uh, data quality, data integration, each one of those boxes relates to a specific role in an organization. So what AutoML does, with, along with automatic analytics, it's going to automate uh, data cataloging. It's going to uh, automate as much as possible the data integration. And it's going to automate the data quality. Now, there's still work that has to be done for data scientists uh, to still clean up some work, but a big chunk of it is going to be uh, mollified. So what this does at the end of the day is accelerates the discovery process, it improves data preparation and data pipeline. And at the end of the day, it enables faster adoption or actionable insights. So rather than going through this whole process, you know, taking weeks to go through a model, developing model, coming up with results, and then coming up with, with a report with visualization and trying to make sense out of this, this is going to augment and uh, automate the entire process and not only uh, correlate that relevant data, but also provide real-time insights. It'll give you English, uh, proper English uh, output that says, if you get, see this issue, this is what you need to do. So this is gonna focus significantly on the end goal of these analysis. That's the, uh, that's the key here. And that should reduce your overall pipeline process flow uh, significantly. So now that we've dealt with data management issues, and now we talked about how to do data quality and data integration, there has to be a platform to support all this data. And that's where Unified Data Tier comes into play. So before we get into this, let's talk about the pain point here. Over the last 15, 20 years, we've seen this emergence of all these different data stores. We've seen document databases, key value databases, uh, analytics, relational, obviously has been there for a long time, but, and graph and spatial. And this is great. We love best of breed technology. But what this has done is lines of business have created their own little siloed environment uh, for, for their specific use case. Uh, continuous integration, continuous develop, uh, development has, a, has even uh, created a bigger, I hate to say a bigger mess, but it's created uh, uh, this uh, service independence because Developers want to quickly develop their application, and they want to use the app. They want to use a data store that's specific for what they're trying to build, which is great, right? But what this does is it creates a separate database tier, separate data store per application servers, and it creates siloed. So, what is the issue with that? Well, it creates disparate systems, leads to fragmentation at all layers, right? And this is uh, this slide here depicts what I call my flywheel of fragmentation. And we've seen this as many customers I deal with, as many uh, uh, CIOs and CTOs that I uh, talk to, it's always the same consistent story is that it's great that we have all these lines of business doing their independent best of breed world. But at the end of the day, I have issues to deal with from a fragmentation from all these layers. First off, we have different development strategies. We have different APIs to deal with. Uh, IT directors have to deal with unique management skills at, for each one of these databases and these different platforms. Chief data officers, CIOs, having to deal with data divergence, right? A lot of CDOs are having a mandate that says we want consistent data across all our platforms. That's extremely difficult to do if you have 10 different platforms. And data integration becomes very, very difficult. <clears throat> Now, fourth, data security. Now, data security is hard as it is, right? We all know that. Now, can you imagine applying a consistent security model for all these different platforms? And last but not least, something near and dear to my heart is high availability. Now, some of these different data platforms, some of these document databases, these graph databases that are out there, third-party systems, they don't have the same level of high availability requirements or same level of high uh, capabilities, I should say, or even DR capabilities. So all this leads to fragmentation at all these different tiers, right? So what is a solution? A converged database. You'll start hearing this term a lot or over the next, uh, if you haven't already, right? And it's not just an Oracle thing. A lot of other uh, platforms are starting to do that too because they want to build a platform that's ubiquitous or uh, omni omniverbal for all these platforms. So what converged database is it's a multi-model database. So when we talk about a multi-model database, we're talking about a platform that supports multiple data types, multiple workloads, and isolation support. For example, uh, with Oracle Converged Database, obviously, Relational has been there forever. JSON 
and 19C is really, really robust. XML has been there for a long time. Graph and spatial are the cornerstone in their space. OLA and Oracle Text. Now you combine these different data types and workloads and couple that up with Oracle Rack, DataGuard, sharding and partition. Now you have a really, really robust scalable platform. Now, <clears throat> this is probably my only marketing slide that I have, but for you guys, if you're enterprise edition customers, uh, you can start using this technology right off the bat. You, have, you already have embedded a multi-tenant database with three PDBs. You have Oracle Advanced Analytics Option plus machine learning and you have Oracle Graph and Spatial. So if you have requirements that do vector management, relationship management, along with your ERP system or transaction system, you can use all these different data models right off the bat with, with your enterprise edition of, uh, platform. So what does a converged database do? What is this, what problems is it solving? If you remember my flywheel of fragmentation, it addresses each one of those different things. So with the converged database, Oracle converged database, we have integrated high availability, obviously through RAC, DR, and DataGuard. Uh, we have integrated security with advanced security options. It's graph and spatial are built in, as I mentioned before. We have machine learning that's built in and you have integrated development tools. Obviously we have Apex, uh, SQL developer and spatial studio. So this is kind of gives you a kind of a feel for a fact that not only does we have wide multifarious data type support, but we have integrated support for, uh, for scale. So now that we talked about data quality, analytics, unified data tier, let's talk about getting, making some sense out of this data. And I know Rich is going to talk a lot more about Oracle analytics, so I'm not going to steal his thunder, but at the heart of all this, it's like I said earlier, it's not just a matter of collecting data. It's taking that data and trying to make some sense out of it. So data variety, data diversity produces enrichment. So blending this data together really is, is what makes the differentiator. So once you start applying machine learning and uh, uh, AI to, the, to this platform, it positions you for adaptive intelligence. So you can do interesting things like correlation, clustering, forecasting, anomaly detection. So the questions you can start getting answered are like, what caused the problem? What should I do next? And how can I prevent this in the future, right? It goes back to my prescriptive analytics, which I talked about in the beginning, right? So all these things are the cornerstone uh, of analytics and uh, machine learning. So to give you an example, United Postal Service actually took this approach. <clears throat> they take best vector, they take their weathering data, their transactional data, the ERP, their planning data, as well as their, uh, uh, their event management system, and these are all different multifarious data types. They do data blending. And they come up with a really rich uh, logistics platform. And that's a really good example of taking all these variety of data sets and making some sense out of this data. <clears throat> so uh, because I'm in public sector, a lot of this stuff, like I said, is near and dear to my heart. You guys have already seen in where machine learning and analytics use cases, you know, predict prediction of uh, success and failure of campaign. Uh, sentiment analysis, web search modeling. But what I think is really cool, and I deal with this on a, on a regular basis, is working with cities or federal. And when they talk about crime mapping, predictive policing, taking event data, taking weathering data, and blending it together to come up with some really interesting analysis. Uh, so you'll start seeing, you, know, you guys already started seeing smart cities, 3D city, uh, city modeling, but emergency services, all these are great examples of cities that have taken advantage of data blending and a unified platform. So as I wind down, I kind of want to mention a quote, and it's a quote by me, by the way, <laughs> and I said it today, is that what I'm seeing out in the field and out in the industry is that businesses are trying to answer questions based on the data that they have. Right, so looking at their platform, looking at all the different data sets that they have and saying, what can I get answered from here? The better approach is really to start with your business questions that are critical and then go do data discovery and data acquisition mode, right? Because that really solves the bigger question. And that's what gives you return on investment. And as I wind down in summary, and before I hand it to Rich, let me just kind of summarize, you know, data analytics, machine learning is moving from hype to mainstream. You may have already, you guys have already seen it, you're exposed to it on a regular basis. 
uh, AI and ML are transformative technologies that require transformative approaches. This is what I said, it's a high caloric change and data quality, data management is all part of that. <clears throat> so you need to build a data-driven ecosystem and foundation. So data analytics should not be a siloed, it should not be a siloed exercise. It's not a one-time use case. It's, a, it's not a it's not a one-time doing. You need to rinse and repeat, build a whole organization around that. And the emergence of augmented analytics is really going to streamline the data pipeline process. You'll start hearing more and more about how analytics, augmented analytics is going to play a key, uh, key part in machine learning and the overall uh, data pipeline process. And converged database, what I call a unified data tier, is going to be the enabling technology for data as an asset. And finally, this dovetails into what Jim's going to be talking about, is we're going to start seeing a huge job growth and opportunities in AI, machine learning, and analytics for DBAs. So DBAs, if they want to evolve and do something different, we saw that one, uh, one slide that had all these different roles and responsibilities. We have tons of opportunities to get involved with augmented analytics, as well as data cataloging, data transformation. And with that, I'm going to transfer this over to Rich. All right. Thanks so much, Neaton. I will say my dad worked on the North side, so he was a Cubs fan and my grandfather was a Sox fan. So I ended up liking them both along with the bears and the Hawks. Of course, I do remember like Neaton, Santo, Banks, uh, Don Kessinger, Glenn Beckard commercials with empire carpet. I think it was Danley garage, Danley fence. Garage. Oh my God. Those are good memories. Yeah, but my CEO is asking for a little bit much. He doesn't understand that there is heavy disruption happening and technology is changing so fast. Keeping up with it is very hard. Luckily, Oracle's come out with an autonomous database and machine learning right in Oracle where I just load it up and go. And with big data and IoT, the data's coming. He wants a lot of data. Okay, we're going to have a lot. My DBA is going to get more important. So I don't know why I love Oracle. But really moving from, you know, where I had a mainframe to where we're using digital to where we're wearing digital with advanced prosthetics, people are already implanting digital. So things are accelerating fast. I mean, if I look at the telegraph, it went to the telephone and went to the cell phone. You know, encyclopedia went to Wikipedia, filing cabinet, gave a database. But now it's going faster. Email, Snapchat, Instagram. And Wikipedia is going to Alexa and Siri. DBA is going to Autonomous Database. Alexa and Siri is really a robot. So is Autonomous Database, a robot that manages the database. Luckily, DBA is the most overworked person, and the person you need the most as data becomes more important. So it's good we're giving them some help. But service robots are already out there. They're not coming, they're here. They work now. Uh, are they gonna get rid of your job? No, uh, probably gonna affect mostly lower income jobs and in certain company, certain countries. But innovation, you know, the telegraph was there and then came the telephone or the telephone was there and then came the cell phone. You know, you can't stop that new innovation. All you can do is embrace it. I look at innovators out there and go, Apple's, you know, the guardrails are really, they wanna be a tech innovator. Whereas Amazon doesn't just wanna be a tech innovator. They were, didn't just wanna be sell books. You know, they have their own Black Friday, for goodness sakes. So, they're just an innovator. They have an innovation day. And then Google is big on tech, but they're even more of an innovator. Self-driving cars where they're taking tech like machine learning, like TensorFlow, where I do image recognition, look at 5,000 pictures of cats. And then, oh, when you're driving your self-driving car and you see a cat, don't hit it. You know, and others are also trying to do that. Maybe not as good. But Oracle is more of a somebody giving you the tools. They're making the best tools. And Amazon uses Oracle, giving you. And they're saying cloud is coming. They're saying, why machine learning? Why use Oracle for machine learning? That's where the data is. And they're giving you better tools. 
and their second generation cloud grew 140% in Q4. Autonomous database grew 70% in Q4. Why? Because it's leading you faster to machine learning. Oracle, though, in very common Larry Ellison fashion, says, I'll just give you whatever you want. I bought a company called datascience.com. Oracle is one of the top 10 acquirers of AI companies. And you could use Oracle Analytics Cloud as well, if you want to just point and click. Or you could use the autonomous database, which I'm putting machine learning inside and giving you the ability to call all the algorithms we have. Or I'll give you our software as a SaaS, our SaaS products and all the ERP apps. And I'm going to put machine learning in it. They give, it, they give you the choice of how you want to do it. But they're serious about it. You went to the last open world, world's first autonomous database. Everywhere tells you all about it. Robots that manage a database, autonomous database. It's exactly what we need because we need the DBA in other places. Uh, and it's self-healing, self-driving, self-tuning, self-recovering, self-scaling, growing fast. Why? Because the DBA needs help. People want to look at some big data and they could just throw it in an autonomous database. You go to an autonomous database, three minutes later, you provision it, it's up and running. 18C if you want. Up and running, 19C if you want. Three minutes. Then load your data. Oh, going to upgrade 18C database? They're telling me, sent me an email and said, hey, your autonomous 18C database, Rich, is going to be upgraded to 19C. We're going to automatically test it, make sure it's as fast as it was in 18C with things like automatic indexing. So Oracle is also helping me in the upgrade process, going to upgrade it for me. But as neat and say, you get three PDBs, but that's only on 19C. Starting with 19C, you get three user-created PDBs. You should be on 19C. If not, uh, send me an email. But where are things going? Where are you in current history and the answer is in the world the beginning of machine learning you know supervised learning i give you 3000 cats and you do image classification i could use that in autonomous database oh machine learning i give you some data of what happened certain statistics you use regression you give me a forecast to predict what's going to happen in my numbers or hey go to big data or it or iot unsupervised learning and cluster that data to target market. Show, show me different age groups or different kind of buyers. There's all kinds of different pieces here. Or they classify data to find fraud detection. It's deep. What's the most important thing you need to know? About the business. Which pieces do you actually need? If you look at crisp DM methodology, which is a cross-industry standard process that came from manufacturing decades ago, so you use a process, understand the business, then understand, and Oracle has a six-week Chris, Chris Dia methodology that they show with Charlie Berger. Second, understand the data. Do you have the right data? Well, better have a good DBA. Data preparation, get it ready for algorithms. It'd be better if my DBA knew what algorithms needed. Could be a DBA as well. Model the data. Most of it, SQL, PL, SQL would be good if I had a good Oracle SQL person. Evaluation. So when I look at things, what's important right now for me to leverage technology as I head into this future? The answer is, you know, make sure I have a good DBA and I have good SQL skills. Well, all my skills are in Oracle. That's perfect. Well, let's look at it. What are these algorithms like and how hard is this? Well, first of all, Mathematicians have written the algorithm. So here's one that's anomaly detection, builds a mathematical circle as small as humanly possible until some things are falling outside and those are the anomalies. Or that's a one class support vector machine. Another one is a linear, su linear support vector machine. Separate my client customers into two good and bad customers and make the line as far as humanly possible using five pages of math to do it. Guess what? You don't have to write the math. All I have to do is go to that autonomous database, click on the service console, click on machine learning, take a look at anomaly detection, and what is it using? SQL, but ah, a little bit new though. What do I have to know? 
I have to create a table. I know how to do that. I have to insert into it an algorithm name, support vector machines. Now I can use that to find an anomaly. And then I have to create a model, customer 360 model, and I do a function called classify that data using this table I just created with the algorithm name in it. I'm gonna do it based on customer ID. Then what is it? Just SQL. Select household size, years resident. I wanna find the anomalous customers based on years of residence. And this shows the years of residence. Who's the most anomalous based on whatever I wanna have. You can see I'm now doing production probability based on that model I created up above down here. And that's where I find out that it's anomalous. The rest of it is SQL. Oh, find the top 15, same thing. Go into that 360 model that I just created that calls that support vector machine, which just happens to classify the data to find anomalous, find the top 15. Boy, that wasn't hard. I needed no SQL. Oh, find the attributes that are making them anomalous. All I have to do is just do things like rank and find different attributes. And now I could find why they're anomalous. So Oracle has made machine learning. So if you're great at Oracle, you're going to be great at machine learning. Oh, but if you're just somebody who likes to point and click, Oracle Analytics Cloud, which is not free, like Oracle Machine Learning you just saw, I could also graph things. There's a nice little graph, segments, customers into different colors. Width is the, pro the profit. Oracle Analytics Cloud, if I want to use an algorithm, I can do a K-means, which means cluster into five groups. I get a cluster into four or three or two, whatever I want. It could be three age groups, maybe five age groups, whatever it is. But I can just point and click. I don't know how to write SQL. But Oracle has built all the algorithms out there that you, that you classify data, cluster it, anomaly detection, time series, regression, and so on, all those different ways. And they've done it over the last 10 or so years. They've also had statistic functions that almost nobody has that they've built over the last 20 or 30 years also can integrate to R, can integrate to Python. If I go to PubMed, I can look at healthcare to see what they're writing about. Notice what they're writing about, the different algorithms. Support vector machine. Well, I just used it for anomaly detection. Maybe that's why they use it. Maybe that's why articles are being written about support vector machines or articles are being written about neural networks, maybe to classify images, which I can also do. If I want to look at 3,000 cats and not hit a cat and then so on. If you're the DBA and you know Oracle, you know about 90% of this picture. How about pick up Hadoop? It's like learning a new feature of Oracle. And then go through Oracle Big Data SQL and look at Hadoop through the security of Oracle and not worry about the unsecure Hadoop. But data is the new oil. They go out there and get data, but it's so big. It's coming at me so fast, it has different values, it has different varieties. Is different truth to it. How do I do that? And the answer is, I have to have something like Oracle to be able to go after different types of data. I need a converged database. I don't want five different databases where I'm going to move this data around. Moving data around is hard and slow. And people want to see it now. If I want prescriptive analytics, as Neaton talked about, I'm only going to get it with Oracle if I want to piece all this together. And I need something really fast to run it. How about in the cloud, I can get multi-tenant to break it into different pieces. Maybe, maybe I use it on-site. Oracle has where you can actually use the cloud on your own site where you pay month to month, but they give you all the hardware. But I, maybe I'm going to move one of those pluggable databases to a, an autonomous database for someone else to look at or look at that data. Maybe I want it in memory. How about real application clustering so it doesn't go down? How about data guard so I can recover? How about partitioning because this data is broken into different pieces that I'm going to want to know? All the things with machine learning literally are going to leverage everything you've ever heard Oracle build into the product. Oh, and by the way, how about some security? 
that'd be nice to have, huh? Some of these databases have one or two of these kinds of security. Some have almost none. Oh, I'm just an apps DBA. What about apps? Oh, they put machine learning in the apps for you already. Use manufacturing, it'll automatically use machine learning to find out and give you alerts to production. Oh, you got some problems with the jam consistency or pH level. Oh, you're a, you're a CFO. You, need, you want predictive prescriptive analytics. How about put the optimal discount in and prescribe to me exactly what revenue I need by changing what discount I need to give to people so that I prescribe exactly what discount I should give. Or how about employees? Who's my most important employee? She doesn't look very happy. Actually, don't do gesture recognition just to let you know. But let me see what I can do to change. Oh, let's give her a little more salary, maybe a little more vacation time. And now she'll be happy. Or maybe I'm just going to piece all those together. Where I'm looking where strawberry lots failed consistency. Why? Because Well, human capital management said, well, they didn't have the best person working out there. And they were on the second shift. And oh, by the way, they put in too much pectin. And oh, by the way, the supply chain said, because of coronavirus, you know, Berry Farms was my COVID-19 supplier. And oh, by the way, different IOT has told me that temperature wasn't right. The blender was going too fast. I could find the real problem. So are you leveraging the database and robotics? It's available now with Oracle. You can do it. Am I leveraging Alexa, Siri with Oracle? You could do it now. It's available. How about the database GPS and robotics? I could do it now. How about virtual reality or mixed reality? Maybe for manufacturing or augmented reality for driving or maybe for retail. Either of these. How about database and medicine? Are we going toward Gattaca? Those are the symbols for genes, DNA rather. Security issues. He looks a little like Edward Snowden if you think about it. Him some grow that beard a little glasses and anyway uh, do you want to be like capital one or do you want a secure database and then also make sure it stays magical not manic like some people are toxic like others protect that data we're moving from where things used to be all about tech big data internet of things cloud computing these were coming this is where 30% of the people are actually using them, predictive analytics. And 2015, it became all about robotics, smart robotic, connected home, autonomous vehicles were coming. Gesture control started to be here. 2018, it's all about tech creating this new reality. What's coming next? Deep neural nets, digital twin, you and your autonomous database, person who runs it for you, augmented reality. Are we leveraging those things out there? Actual robots, they're beyond science fiction already. Things may come to those who wait, but only the things left by those who hustle. And just to let you know, this is the correct direction to look at the Picasso from. It's a lady who was walking away once for Picasso, and that's what he made it. And this is a flamingo picking, picking something up. All right, and with that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna send it to my good friend, He's going to troll beer all over the White Sox because that's how often they're good. And he's going to tell you about the next step and about not Kaminsky Park, Kaminsky Park. Are you sure you're not a insider? All right, let me grab uh, control. Hopefully this will work. Are you, are you really a South, South Sider, my, my, my good friend? You my friend, yes. I... I would throw beer at somebody, and I know I gave. Let me make sure I've got control here. Yes, I am. Southwest side. There we go. Uh, I know we were given Neaton way too much grief, but you know, oops. Wait a second there. There we go. Let's try that again. There we go. Okay, let me go back a couple slides. I'm sorry. We figured out some interesting things about how this all works today, and you know, I had these two uh, C level guys kind of, you know going on and on about all these wonderful things, but I'm a DBA here, my friend. I got a couple kids in college, maybe over at uh, Notre Dame, you know, or maybe at Northwestern. What does my future hold? Briefly, at the center of everything you're gonna be doing, I'm sorry, if you're a DBA 
or you're an apps DB or whatever, guess what? It's going to be autonomous. I was just reading a really interesting presentation this morning. They were not talking about AI. They were not talking about ML. They were talking about IA, intelligent automation. And at the heart of this is going to be an autonomous database or something like it. We talked, uh, or really Rich talked a lot more about uh, business analytics and uh, OAC and OML and all that great stuff. But the truth of it is, as a DBA, what I really need to think about is what my future is going to hold up, what I'm going to be able to do here. And as Rich and Neaton both talked about, right, uh, getting into that flow is going to be crucial for the team members that are here today, right? So 90% right now of app developers are telling their DBA, hey, your databases are causing the delay of release of key features in my environments, right? These are some interesting stats. We're still spending almost three quarters of our maintenance, of our budgets in IT on maintenance. And four out of 10 BBAs are handling 50 or more databases. There's no way you can continue to be that helicopter DBA hovering over your databases and making sure that everything's gonna be okay. Here's the good news. If you're a DBA today, Apps DBA, Oracle DBA, Core DBA, whatever you might be, you already know where the data is and where it isn't in your organizations because you've been filling that role for literally, literally several years, maybe even a few decades as I have. And here's the cool thing. In 19C, we have a whole bunch of ways, Rich alluded to this, and Neaton talked about it as well, right, to kind of bring this all together. You have partition external tables, in-memory external tables, hybrid partition tables. What are we saying here? What we're saying is that the data is external to our database. It don't matter, my friend, because with these tools, we can get to the data anywhere. And for me, from my viewpoint as an Oracle DBA, that's what I really see as the operative part of converged database, that I can get to any data that I want, wherever it is, and deliver it securely, just in time, to just the right people. And now, Alfredo, we have a brief survey that Alfredo's going to toss up here. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what we're going to do here. Uh, I'm going to give up control. You don't have to give up control. I think all I got to do is I'm going to launch a poll and I think you should probably okay. see uh, it pop up on everyone's screen. I'm going to do that. You, right. want, me to, yes. you want me to stop sharing? Nope. You don't have to stop yep, sharing. There it oh, is. Good. There you go. So, so it's a short poll. Everything here is anonymous, but folks, if you can go ahead and take this poll, we're going to take these data back to the powers that be at Oracle and tell them everything that they need to know about the concepts we talked about. Yeah, we're going to tell them, you know, is it Ron Sano, Ernie Banks, Billy Williams, or is it the Big Herd or Bill Moulton? I'm going to find out who's better. Agreed. Bill Moulton, good Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Stroh's beer, yes. Wow, I actually remember all those guys, and I'd, I'd say, uh, um, I'd say uh, uh, Don Kessinger was my favorite. Becker. Kessinger. First stop in second baseman. Ernie Banks at first. Kessinger was a uh, uh, times. Yeah, I did see a lot of really great games at 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 uh, Kaminsky, as we used to joke, Kaminsky <laughs> Park. Kaminsky. But my, my fondest memory of Cubs Park, by the way, is my brothers, my two brothers and one of their friends making me buy beer at the age of 16, back when you were five, that was five years before legally we could do it. And they were sitting in the bleachers and as I came up the stairs with the four beers, they stood up and cheered me. Not, not to one of my, one of my more embarrassing moments of life. But anyway, <laughs> um, just to, to wrap up here, uh, your time's valuable, and uh, I, you may have some questions. Uh, let's see. I should still have control of Richard's screen. Here's our DBA retirement strategy, right? Um, we actually talked about this a little bit, the best way to present it. Where are we going here? Um, well, if you're 60 to 65, well, I sound like an 
it's sort of a uh, sort of a uh, uh, you know Tom Selleck reverse mortgage guy here. If you're 60 to 65, what are your options? Well, probably best bet is remain in Oracle. Whoop, I'm gonna pass that one kind of quickly. Remain in a traditional Oracle BBA. Hmm. I'm in a little bit of trouble getting these uh, guys to display here. But if you're 60 to 65, stick with being a, a, a DBA, but you better get over to autonomous database because it's in your future. Uh, if you're 50 to 59, well, then consider becoming a data engineer, right? Get into that uh, data, whatever you want to call it, data storage, da uh, data security engineer, and facilitate, there we go, your data engineer team. If you're 30 to 49, man, get to data scientist. Get to data engineer first and then work towards data scientist. And if you're under 30, dude, not to dude you, but dude, I don't know what you're going to be doing. There's a job that hasn't been invented yet, okay? You know, literally 25 to 30 years ago, database administrators were a brand new job. There was no formal role like that. I have no idea what it's going to be in, in the next 30 to 35 years. I just know it hasn't been invented yet. That doesn't mean you can't take advantage of opportunities that are already here as well. Uh, final point, and I think we're almost done here, Oracle's never been caught from behind. It's always, always uh, been uh, at, at a uh, forefront of things that are happening. Um, we also have some stuff. We're going to send these slides over to Alfredo a little bit later, but we have some really great stuff, some useful resources and documentation, including some articles I've been writing, uh, a four-part article on uh, machine learning and so forth, and we'll get that over to you as well. But I think the rest of this is just some reference information, and I'm going to turn this back over to uh, our friend Alfredo to wrap it up. Thanks, Jim. And thank you, Rich and Nitin. This was a really awesome presentation. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to come and present for us today. Um, let's not forget about next week. We have, I don't know if Rich, did we have an extra slide at the end of this? I thought you guys did, but maybe not. Uh, for those, you have a, yeah, there you go. That's up, right? The viscosity is up. Uh, the MOUG, yeah. Yep, yeah. So let's not forget about the, the MOUG, COUG training week that's virtual next week. Um, we've got five really fantastic presentations. Um, you can register for those at the viscosityna.com slash event. Hey, I'm presenting again next week. How about that? Yeah. You guys are... You hey, got me too. Stars. <laughs> <laughs> so... Yeah, it should be really good. Uh, any, any any questions, questions the, out there? I don't see anything in the uh, chat. We'll give it another 30 seconds or so, see if anybody has anything to say. Let's see if it's Cubs or Sox out there. You got to at least chat and put Cubs or Sox. You can put Cubs or Sox, whatever you do. All right, Alfredo. Put... Good for you, man. <laughs> see one Cubs, one Sox. At least Sox. I got one guy on my side. I like even more now. <laughs> it's, one, it's one to one. You know, I was a huge, I'll say real quick, I was a huge Sox fan as a kid until they tore down the park and put the new one up. I like the old parks. Oh, that was great. When, really they home run. when they hit a home run, when the scoreboard went off. That was, yeah. Yeah. Fireworks went off. They had a shower yeah. back there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Except, except getting, getting out of the parking lot at 1030 at night after a yeah, double that, header was. That's <laughs> right. You're right. Yeah. Was, was a little more interesting than it used to be. <laughs> But well, you can't beat disco demolition night. Uh, <laughs> oh my god, now you're really going back in time. Anyway, I have been to the new cell. I, I actually like the new cell, I think it's kind of cool. It's a great place. Uh, you know, it, it needed a bit of an upgrade, but hey, can't beat fun at the old ballpark. Hot Harry Harry here. Yeah, anyway, uh, I'm with Ramesh, she likes them all. Yeah, yeah, all right, support. Yeah, okay, support all teams. Yes. All right, great. As long as, no, the the, as long as it's not the Bulls. Pull up the Bulls oh, out. I forgot the Yeah, you left the Bulls out. You left the Bulls out. What was that? Oh. Anyway. Oh, yeah. Well, this has been fun, guys.
Well, thank you so much. And we look forward to uh, seeing a bunch of you on uh, the, you know, the. So Alfredo, is it next week? Yeah. Alfredo, is it deep dish pizza? Do you want Italian beef or you want a good hot dog or polo sausage? Oh, that's, I, can I have all? All. All of the above. Okay, you are from Chicago. Yeah. yeah. So that means no you're true choose. Chicago. Yes. Yeah. All oh, of the above. Oh, man. Yeah, you got to take the above. Karen's going. Hey, to uh, <laughs> there's Karen. <laughs> all right. I think we're done. Yep. Thanks, yeah. guys. Really appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. I, I, I got to go so for much. This was fun. This. I got to go get me a Maxwell Street Polish. (laughs) All right. See you guys. Thanks again. Bye.